This is a network monitoring system that we put together for a TV broadcaster and understanding what they wanted to monitor will be helpful for you as you look at your own monitoring. So let's take a walk through this diagram. If we start on the top left here, you can see this is site one of X. We made this diagram flexible for you. So no matter how many sites you have, whether it's one or thousands, you can see that you'll just need one of these devices out of each remote facility. So if we look at one of them, we have a couple things going on here. We have a lightning strike detection system. We actually have three sensors, and that's going to go on three different areas of your grounding system. You can use as little as one here, but this client elected to use three for greater redundancy and better monitoring. And what happens is you pass your grounding system through these solid core sensors. The issue had been, when we initially tried to roll this out, that because this is a solid core, you have to pass your grounding through it, and that was all solid and shouldn't be cut. So what do you do? We actually had a client find something at a trade show where it was some hardware that clamps around your grounding system and then routes around as a little auxiliary flow of electricity, and then you can pass that through the solid core. So if you have any questions about specifically what that is, just give us a call and we'll let you know what that is. But with that kind of a solution in place, you then wire the lightning strike detectors into the discrete inputs of this NetGuardian DIN. This is your on-site RTU. It's collecting all kinds of different data. And you'll use three of the discrete inputs to collect three of the lightning strike detection outputs. So whenever there's a lightning strike, it's going to latch a relay. We're going to pick that up in the NetGuardian. You then have five digital inputs that are left over because it has eight. So you can tie that onto a door contact or a motion sensor, smoke detector, water on the floor, anything you want. So you have some flexibility. Then we have some analog inputs that this client wanted to use to monitor three-phase AC. So these are split core transducers. You just you can actually open them up and wrap them around your wires so it's a bit easier to install. And then that gets piped into our analog inputs as a zero to five volt or four to 20 milliamp output, depending on the transducer. So we can pick up either one of those standards. You'll also see a D-wire temperature sensor. And that's a little sensor like this. They're quite small, they're bus powered. This one here that I'm holding in my hand also does airflow, so you could put that on an HVAC vent. That wasn't required in this project, so it was just temperature on its own. And that connects to the D-wire port. You can see that at the bottom of these, you have an in and an out port, so you can daisy chain up to 16 on one daisy chain off of that one port on the diagram. So that is a handy thing to do with the NetGuardian DIN, and most other NetGuardians will have that D-wire port. You can see that this is a dual power device. This was a wide range. It's between negative 18 and I believe that's negative 58 volts DC. That would accept either negative 24 or negative 48. So you have a really wide range of voltage. We do some builds like that so you just get a wide range and also it means you can have sites that have neg 24 or neg 48 and you can standardize on one hardware build. So that's what's going on out at each remote site. And you can see that's repeated down here at site X of X. All of those NetGuardians are being pulled by a team on Mini Master. They support SNMP, so if you have an SNMP manager, you can go ahead and use that. Our team on is good at collecting information from our remotes, as well as a lot of legacy equipment. So if you need the ultimate incompatibility, team on is a good thing to look at. In this case, it was just a new application. They had some NetGuardians, and so they decided to go with our master as well, the team on Mini G2. And team on Mini will, will monitor natively up to 16 sites, and you can do some expansion modules. There's a team on Slim that'll do 64, and then the biggest model, the team on LNX, can support thousands of sites. So it's just a question of how many sites you need to monitor. And uh, there's no ongoing license. You're just gonna purchase that number of devices one time, and then you have a master you can use forever. So how do you monitor this thing? There are a couple different interfaces. My favorite in Timon is the WebGFX. This is a map view that allows you to see what's happening with little blinking circle icons on top of a map or on top of a photograph. You can use any image background you want. And it's just so much clearer when your operators are trying to figure out what's going on. It's stressful enough if something bad is going on in your network. You don't need to add to it with confusion. So the map interface, the photographs, they just make it very clear. Also, it has text-based uh, menu. So if you want to view alarms that way, that's available. A lot of different views inside the web interface. If you have your people running around out in the field, you don't want them to have to come back to the office to get to the web interface. So there's mobile web. That's one way to look at it. But you can also just send out emails or SMS text messages. And that can be a great way to just get what you need to know on your phone instantly, easy to understand. So that is a very common thing to set up inside of Tmon. T-Windows is an older interface. If you're a seasoned team on user you might want to use that but i don't think most users will you can administer and control the team on totally inside of its web interface so you're going to set up all your alarm descriptions how you want to get notifications all the scheduling everything is in the web interface it's very easy to do and there are also web reports 
that you can uh, do inside of Tmon. And these will be PDFs. So if you want to say, what are my most common alarms in the last couple of months? And so you can go look for recurring problems and try to root them out. Or maybe do a trend of what have temperatures been looking like over the last year. You can do a whole range of, re of reports, and those are really good to try and make some insights into the physics of what's going on at, at your network and not just managing the day to day. Sometimes you want to step back and have a report on how has this thing really been running over the long haul so I can make some optimizations. So if you'd like some information about how you can have a remote monitoring system for your own network, give us a call. We'll put a drawing like this together for you so you can see how it would work. Our phone number is 1-800-693-0351. You can also get on the website dpstele.com and that's loaded with more information like this.